Hi everybody, this is Rob Redman. Uh, welcome to this video. Uh, this is going to be um, just a quick one again, um, but showing off a, a technique which uh, has cropped up in my normal work um, over the last few days. Um, I was sent a scene file which is all about this kind of 8-bit um, kind of pixel art type thing, uh, and it was a bit of a mess and somebody had kind of used a cloner to build a massive grid of um, cubes which they were using as the pixels and then basically uh, traced in the front view uh, the outline using a selection tool uh, the outline of, a, of an object uh, and then deleted all the cubes left over um, and I think this has probably been covered elsewhere but I thought I'd show just a quick way to create pixel art for uh, various models uh, in this particular case I'm going to do some shameless kind of uh, self-promotion here I'm going to use a part of the music pack uh, which you can find over at the Pixel Lab um, which I created some of the models for. Uh, in this case I'm actually going to use the treble clef um, just because it's a nice simple bold shape um, which works quite well in this kind of scale video um, but uh, the example here of Freddy uh, this is done exactly the same way um, so uh, use whatever object you want I'm just going to use this for this particular reason here okay so all I've got in the scene at the moment is literally just my clef here as you can see there's nothing else in the scene at all um, so I'm just going to stick with this and what I want to do is just kind of make this if you imagine it being um, well very similar to this Freddy uh, so if it was made of pixels rather than this very smooth spline uh, we're going for that effect there now the way to do this or one way of doing this anyway is to create a cube now this is far too big uh, and this cube is going to represent our pixel so I'm going to make this probably about 5 by 5 by 5 uh, I'm going to go for quite a lot of pixels here I'm going to go for kind of a quite a high resolution it'll still be obviously pixelated uh, in fact let's just go for 10 for now just in case you can't quite I'm just thinking in the video 5 might be too small but play around it you know you'll you'll know what your cloners can handle and what your computer can handle um, so use that as a, a guide to yourself okay so we've got that cube there now drop that into a cloner like so and the cloner wants to be changed from a linear to a grid array and we want this to be kind of the same kind of proportions as the object that you're going to make into pixel art so in this particular instance I'm going to go into my front view I'm just going to lift that cloner up and I'm going to increase the size of it just to encompass that that clef it helps if you select the right object drop so I'm going to go for about so and I'm just going to decrease the width a little bit doesn't need to be so wide and the reason I'm sticking reasonably close to the proportions of the treble clef here is just to reduce the amount of clones that I'm actually going to need and so I'm going to go into my side view as well um, I probably only need one depth wise so I'm going to just reduce the size down to just one one clone in depth um, and now I'm going to just increase the amount of clones that I have to fill up as though this was print or, or whatever it was we were replicating um, so I'm going to go for let's say let's have a look in the front view here might go a bit smaller I might take that cube down to five after all and I'll just have to zoom in so you can see it um, just because you don't want so many that the shapes are lost um, you want them to be able to fill this shape so let's, if I zoom right in here we want for example we want some clones in here to fill this shape out because what we're going to do is effectively um, you can if you're thinking in 2d terms you can imagine this being more of a kind of a spline wrap um, the, not spline wrap the um, uh, it's moved now isn't it but uh, yeah the spline mask which is up up here in this menu these days so this does something quite similar but using geometry okay so right where was I I was gonna decrease the size of the cube which I've done and I'm going to increase the amount of them so I've got a, this is basically representing a, uh, a higher res uh, display that these pixels are forming um, so I'm going to go for let's go for 44 is a nice round number. Okay, and now what I want to do is just make sure 
that my object, my volume shape, which is the clef in this case, intersects all the way through, just so it is actually a volume that we're going to take something from. Um, and then all we need to do is, with the cloner selected, just choose a volume effector uh, in the MoGraph menu, that's right down the bottom there. So I'm just going to drag that into place. I'm just going to drag it underneath, you don't have to do that. Um, but if you add other effectors, so maybe you're going to have a, a random effector and have these all kind of forming into this shape, then you'd want them in a specific order. And I tend to, it's not always the case, but I tend to start keeping them at the bottom as I work. Um, so the, the last to have effect on the scene will be at the bottom of the stack, as it were. Okay, so with the volume effector selected here, you can see two fields. Uh, selection and volume object and it's the volume object that we're going to worry about so I'm just going to take the pick brick there and grab that volume shape or you can drag the shape down into the field um, but either way that's fine and you can see that nothing's happened um, it's not a problem all we need to do is go into our parameters and we're looking right at the bottom you can turn off scale it doesn't make a lot of difference but turn it off if you're not using it and we're going for visibility now you can see that something's happened there um, most of our clones have disappeared and you can see a few corners poking out if I just bring this in closer you can see here we've got a few poking in and out but we don't want to see the original shape now we can hide the original shape by holding down the option key and double clicking on the traffic lights there and you can see that we've got our pixel and this is where you have to really play around with your proportions of clones um, and the spacing between them. So this isn't too bad. Let me just open up my materials palette and I'll just drop a material onto the cloner. Uh, I'll just hide that again as well just so I've got some space in this video so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I'll drop that on the cube in fact. Okay so now we've got that in there you can see that we've got a pretty good cleft shape going on. It's not wonderfully defined. You can see there's a bit of a gap up there um, and it's a bit messy here. So all you need to do is go back into your cloner, take your cube. We could either decrease the size of each pixel, which is our clone, um, and then reduce the size of the spacing between them. Um, so let's do that. Let's go for four centimeter cubed pixels and if we go into the cloner, we can take the amount up and you can see each time I add an extra row or column that we're getting slightly more definition. So I'm gonna go more in the Y as well. In fact, in the front view, this might make more sense just so we can see. And really I'd like to keep the, the width or the gap between the um, clones on the X the same as the Y so I'm just going to decrease here back to uh, and add a few more in the Y like so and now if I hit the H key just to zoom back out and in fact let's go into our 3D view you can see that this is now a perfectly formed uh, treble clef made out of lovely little clones um, perfectly usable to render um, and again this is just the start this is you know there's nothing that you need to there's nothing that says you have to stop right here there's no reason why you couldn't then uh, select the cloner and again let's just like I was mentioning earlier you could add a random effector and then they all kind of explode apart uh, and you can see that there's no kind of telling that that was a treble clef at all um, in fact all you need to do is let's take the random effector down to the bottom of the stack it doesn't make a lot of difference in this example um, but if we go to the effector we've got strength here and this is almost like an opacity with um, effectors uh, if you think of changing the opacity of layers in Photoshop this is kind of like what it's doing so if we think of having the random effector um, and the, the volume effector is different layers stacked on top of each other and change the, the, this is effectively a weight. We can then make them kind of coalesce into that shape uh, like so. So if I bring that up and just show you again, even with just low percentages, and this is kind of what, 18, 17, 18%, you can see that really starting to break up. 
um, and there's no reason why you can't add any other effector that you would use um, you could use some delays you could animate this strength changing so that you could have I mean, you could make them dynamic clones so that you could have an object smash into them and all the pixels would then go flying add a little bit of randomization to to that mix just to have them spinning around you could have them uh, all, all doing all sorts of things uh, you could texture them differently using the shader effector or you could have them you know you could have this strength being driven by espresso and something else so you could have this all all these pixels dancing to the beat of some music in fact I quite like that idea I think we could uh, definitely do with a tutorial on the sound effector because it doesn't get covered much um, but anyway I'm waffling a little bit but I wanted to show that just because somebody had made a bit of a pig's ear of um, a project that I was sent to work on um, and I thought that would be a good way of just kind of I wanted to try something cool uh, using that technique that I could just show to you um, so I thought well, I'll bung Freddy in it see what he looks like done like that and then I thought oh the music packs out there's a good opportunity to just show you one of those objects in use um, and you know with a, a real technique that you can use in the real world so if I just zoom in here you can see nice gaps all looking good and uh, it's very obviously what it's supposed to be so that's the trick with this technique is choosing the right amount of clones um, now if I just turn off that visibility in the volume effector you can see how many clones we've really got uh, and we're talking you know quite a few um, so that's one thing to bear in mind your system is still allocating memory to all the other clones even though they're not being seen so you are actually affecting all of these clones um, so that's just something to bear in mind and that's why I mentioned earlier on about having uh, the, the, uh, the size of the cloner the grid um, being matched reasonably well uh, you could have a huge array of um, clones going on so that you could animate through the scene um, but you really wouldn't want to be doing it like that you'd want to probably nest all of this in a null and have the, the clones moving with it um, anyway that's enough for now and uh, I'll see you all again soon in the next video so I'm going to turn this back on and leave you with that clef I'll see you all again soon bye bye